made in the USA. What does it really cost? Well, if the US federal government applied its own truth in labeling laws to the price of goods and services produced in this country, we'd quickly see. 30% of the retail price goes to federal taxes. Another 10% is what it cost American businesses to comply with federal regulations. For some businesses, it's even more. Add it up. About 40% of every dollar you spend is directly attributed to federal corporation taxes and or federal income taxes. And this doesn't include the approximate 8% for state taxes and up to an additional 10% for excise taxes. Take a $30,000 car. Subtract the federal taxes and regulatory costs and that same car would cost you $18,000. A $75 sweater. Eliminate the federal taxes and regulatory costs and the sweater would cost $45. A $60 bag of groceries, $36. A $79 pair of shoes, $47.40. A dollar value meal double cheeseburger, $0.60. Cents. Seem more affordable? Now take a $400,000 new home. Eliminate the federal government's share, and that same home would cost you $240,000. Eliminate federal taxes and you'd have more money in your pocket. Eliminate federal taxes and you'd have more money to take a vacation. Eliminate federal taxes and you'd have more money to pay off loans. Eliminate federal taxes and you'd have more money to save for retirement. Eliminate federal taxes and you'd have more money to buy that lake home. And that's on the things you buy. Now let's look at what they take from your paycheck. Eliminate the federal income taxes, Social Security, and Medicare deductions, and a $52,000 wage earner's net pay would jump from $1,500 to $1,986.50. Add it up, nearly 25% of what you earn goes directly to the federal government, and 40% of what you spend goes directly to the federal government. That's 65% in hidden costs. What do you get in return? Let's take Social Security. Depending on your income, you may pay into the system three to $500 per month. At retirement, the maximum payout is $2,053 per month and even that is taxed if you have additional income. But what would happen if a married couple saved $300 a month each over 35 years at 7% compounded interest? You would have over $1 million. The nearly $75,000 annual interest of income alone far exceeds the Social Security maximum annual payout. And you still have your million dollar nest egg to provide for yourself and pass down to your children, your grandchildren, or even pay for your children's education. Ready to take your money back? Reduce the tax burden on America and all of a sudden there's more money circulating in the economy. Take your money back and all of a sudden our products and services are more competitively priced at home and abroad. Take your money back and all of a sudden it's profitable again to manufacture products in the United States. Take your money back and all of a sudden American companies are hiring highly skilled, highly paid workers to meet their manufacturing demand. Take your money back. And all of a sudden, America would be the stable economic leader of the free world again. Seem far-fetched? It's not. Could the government operate without federal income taxes? 
Yes. Prior to 1913, there was no federal income tax. Don't we need the federal agencies that federal taxes support? No. Agencies supported by federal taxes, such as the FDA, ATF, and the IRS, are regulatory agencies. Not only are these federal agencies unconstitutional, the free market would regulate itself better, with greater efficiency. Americans would be richer and freer. And the cost of these agencies have grown out of control. The Bureau of Economic Analysis Statistics for 2005 reported the average salary for the 1.8 million federal civilian workers is $106,579. The average salary in the U.S. private sector is $53,289, less than half. Wouldn't charitable organizations suffer? No. Currently, 75% of American families give to charity. With more money in their pockets, Americans would be even more generous with their donations. So, what would we give up? Nothing. Since federal income taxes support only 42% of the total federal budget, the government would still operate effectively with the remaining 58% of the budget. And federal workers would be absorbed into the burgeoning economy by the private sector. To put it in perspective, reducing the $2.8 trillion 2007 federal budget by 42%, would still leave 1.6 trillion, the same amount as the total federal budget for 1997. There would be no need for a national sales tax that only replaces one tax for another, and it will not reduce government spending. But these numbers pale by comparison if you consider the national debt. As of January 2008, our country's public debt is over $9 trillion. The estimated population of the United States is 304 million. That means each citizen's share of the debt is $30,241, and that's over and beyond what you pay in taxes. Regardless of which political party is in control, there's no incentive for politicians to reduce spending. The only way to end this spending spree is to take away the government's checkbook and credit card and let them know the joyride is over. Can we really afford to sit idly as our government spends us into economic ruin and use our taxes to diminish our wealth and destroy our freedoms? Or is it time to take your money back? Take back your jobs. Take back your standard of living. Take back your freedoms. Let's send a message to Washington. Tell, don't ask your local and national elected officials to bring federal spending under control immediately. Stop the federal government's spending spree and demand they abolish federal income taxes. Tell them you want your money back. If they don't abolish the federal income tax, you'll abolish their career. Never vote for any politician who increases the power, scope, or size of government. It's going to take a committed effort, but it can be done. It's your money. Take it back. Thank you.